Alrighty, so the biggest update of probably all, uh, it's kind of been happening in the background while we've been shuffling the work that we've got on, on the hoist, managing the Project Supra. And we're also managing one that I haven't shown you guys yet, which is uh, the Pulsar GDIR that we're managing for one of our customers. We did a dry ice restoration on this. We're managing a few of his other cars in his private collection relative to dry ice. That's a video for another day. There's um, some stuff to talk about there. So uh, I will catch up on that and what's been going on the horse in other videos. Basically, the rundown and, and the, the biggest thing that's kind of been going on, I guess, in a, in a personal shop sense, obviously, is having since completed the E28, we've kind of not really had much on in the way of projects. We did have the Mark II was sold after the launch. Someone spotted the car at the launch, was interested in buying it, and it was a fair price for everybody involved relative to purchasing the car and we are at a bit of a space premium as well so we decided that it would be the best thing to, to move the Mark II on. Uh, we did manage to keep the wheels which is important for us but the car went to a good home at, at a very good value for both parties involved so, so really happy with the outcome of that and the Silver Pajero sold in the interim as well so we we're kind of trying to reduce the fleet size um, for one of two reasons. One of those being obviously that we're also bringing in a vibratory tumbler so we're going to be introducing vibratory tumbler services to our repertoire I guess so so the biggest thing that's kind of been happening in the background and I've been sort of going around and around basically the biggest thing that's been happening is that we finally got our manual chaser worst kept secret in the world we've had this manual chaser since we acquired the other two or the other three I should say but we haven't had the space to bring it down basically the story goes that we bought this car sight unseen from an auction house at the time we'd, we'd had some pretty good success relative to uh, automatic chasers that we got and the Mark II the really good buyers at a very good price so basically what happened was we saw this particular car come up and it was listed as a six-speed manual so we we assumed the only choice or the only logical explanation for a six-speed inside a chase would be a V160. So we gathered some coins together and we put in some pretty competitive bids relative to the price of the car. In hindsight now, it's still incredibly cheap what we acquired the car for given the appreciation level of these cars in, in uh, as of late. However, when we got the car, it didn't match the description. So it did have a six-speed transmission in it, but the six-speed transmission that it has is actually a J160. So all of my IS200, IS300, uh, Alteza people know what I'm talking about. The J160 is a six-speed box that's widely used in Japan for the likes of S15s, RX8s, MX5s, and obviously the Atessas and the IS200s. It's a relatively good box in terms of its, you know, its capacity as a six-speed transmission for those sort of lower-powered cars. They do have the reputation for not being able to handle a great deal of torque, which, you know, if you've ever been in a chase or even from factory, they produce a very strong volume of torque with the variable valve timing and the turbo. So it, it, it does make a lump of torque throughout the pit range. Basically, it came to us and there was a number of things wrong with it. So it is in whole entirely a project car. We thought that, you know, <sighs> We, we, <laughs> we like chases, as, as you could evidently tell. Simon didn't really, outside of the, the E28, which was gonna be his daily car when he resigned from his full-time work, we didn't actually have a project car in terms of you know something for him to build. So I can't think of a better project car than a JZX100. We kind of moved from it being a thing that we were gonna kind of hold on and see what the values look like um, moving forward and, and whatnot to something that we decided to just go, you know what, let's build it, let's fix it. It's in the spirit of the business. We basically decided that we would take it on as a project and uh, the cars are going anywhere. So it is now registered with those beautiful plates, 1JZ RSR, which is awesome. Custom plates and all the rest of it. To give you a rundown of what's going on, six foot or even through these videos, or as you're seeing it, you're probably thinking, wow, man, that's super clean. It's really, really nice. It is a low K example, so it's 120,000 Ks. So the Ks are good and mechanically it's good. It is obviously aesthetically the problem. So there's a couple of things that you tend to notice with uh, cars that you bring in from Japan. And one of the signs of a car, particularly a track oriented car, is when they have no toll reader. So this doesn't even have a card reader in it, a toll reader, which probably suggests that it spent a lot of its time uh, on a track. A couple of things that are puzzling about the car though, so it's really interesting because it's got a J160 in it, which wouldn't be very good for, I guess, um, you know, smashing and rolling through gears. So given the sort of modifications and the way that these modifications have been done, we're probably under the assumption that this was a drift car, uh, as they, you know, mostly are. They, you know, Japan are finally getting their, their pennies and, you know, they'll take a car like this and they'll drift it for 120,000 Ks, ship it off to Australia and make a gang of money off it. So good on them for making the money and maybe not so good on us for buying something like this. But in the, I guess in the broader sense, it's the, like a, the biggest miracle that we bought this car because it's a nice car, super hard to get manual stuff. 
We've toyed with the idea of just putting an R154 in it, which would be easy because essentially the pedal's there, the ECU's there, uh, all the hydraulic setup is already there. So basically you just have to put a clutch, tail shaft and a transmission in it and you'd, you'd pretty much be there. So that's always an option as well. You can still get R154s from Toyota Direct and we have a few friends within that game that will be able to get it to us for cost price. So still not the uh, worst case scenario having the J160 in it. The transmission itself works really well. Having six speed in it, it feels like that overdrive six gear Really, really helps with uh, economy in sense of like you know when you're, you're sort of at cruise. Uh, the car does have an exhaust on it, uh, and in six gear it does drive, which is really nice because the revs are spot on. So uh, I guess in an economic sense it, it does make sense, uh, but outside of reliability and things like that, it, it doesn't really make a great deal of sense. So being the project car that it is, we kind of wanted to go towards a particular style of build. So basically, with the with chases, you know there was. I'm gonna call it the uh, the highlight era of them. You know, that sort of mid 2000s JZX100 tuning style. So the car came from Japan with a really bad front mounting to cooler that was on there to be beaten up to hell. It had like all of the fins were smashed and it was literally being held on by one zip tie. Uh, it came with a Vertex kit from Japan, which is just a fiberglass replica. It's on a genuine Vertex, but it's, it fits really well actually, and, and it, um, it pulls it off. So we're, we're happy with the Vertex kit, and we'll probably hang on to that until um, you know there's another situation where we might paint the car or something, and then we'll look at doing something relative to the bodywork. Obviously, the six-speed transmission. Um, it had a really hacked-up exhaust, so we've kind of saved the standard exhaust to a, to a degree. We fitted a um, an axle back now. The rear end of the car. We've, we've done an axle back basically with a stainless steel muffler um, which is flanged on so we can always just put the standard exhaust back on if we have any issues with you know environmental protection agency and all the Victorian constabulary we can always just pop on the rear muffler and, and quiet it down and sort other things out so it's good to have the option to have a quiet muffler for it as well um, since we got the car uh, we've done a bit of a paint correction on it it has been painted in the dark by a blind man during the sandstorm at my time. So the paint job is not that great. It almost looks to be like a single stage as well. Uh, it's in a flat, well not a flat black, but you know, well yeah, flat black um, or gloss black. It's got no metallic in it. It was originally a 6N9 car like these two here. Someone's kind of just sprayed over to try and make it all one color. They've done that relatively successfully that the cars were one color, but the texture in the paint's really bad. Corrected it as best as we could, you know, but there's only so much you can do relative to um, fixing up a paint job that's really bad with a lot of texture in it. It came with some really, really worn out uh, tires on 19 inch rims that were, I guess, too big. It was on chop springs, had a 90 degree bend, literally like a straight 90 degree bend for the intercooler piping on the front. It was made out of the tail shaft section that they chopped out. So like really, really like <laughs> slapped together. Um, but it works, the car works, it runs, it drives. At the moment we're having issues with the throw of the clutch fork, which is probably causing the car to slip just a touch when you get on power through uh, the rev range. So we've got two options there. We'll probably look at just putting a upgraded clutch in it. Because the conversion is done and it's basically a conversion plate on the back of the block and then the flex plate of the car, the automatic car has been tacked onto the flywheel so it sounds really ghetto and it looks really ghetto it is really ghetto but it works um, no issues with starting it and whatnot so it's actually strangely it works the biggest challenge was to get it registered and get it on the road so we wanted to do everything we could to do that um, in the interim the car surviving and it's driving so we're happy with it as it is when things get bad or if something is to happen then we'll look at the R154 um, but for the interim we might just put a heavy duty clutch in it and, and rework that flywheel maybe get a machine shop to do you know the flywheel stuff so it's not ghetto and then maybe we'll have a little bit more um, response and whatever and heaps of it at the start was like let's just get rid of it put an R154 in it you know you'll never know how good the J160 is so uh, we have a, you know, a good friend of ours PJ from PJ Customs who does a turbo kit to this um, and if you don't follow him follow him now he does some really really cool stuff for turbo kits like factory J-pops and everything it's really really cool check him out he hadn't seen a J160 in one of these uh, Will Tattnall who runs JZX Parts AU another absolute legend if you don't follow them and you're looking for JZX Parts uh, uh, follow JZX Parts AU because they'll just get what you need. Bit weird with what's going on with Russia, but what they have is is fine. We got our Series 2 front lip from him. And nor he, he hadn't seen a J160, um, and there's not a lot of J160s in JZX100s, I guess, globally. There is a little bit going on in the UK. Um, since we got the car, 
a couple of things that we've done with it. We've obviously done the exhaust. Uh, we replaced the front mount intercooler with a new one, mounted that, made up some nice little alloy brackets and whatever. We didn't have the gimbal throughout the whole process, so we didn't get the chance to really film a lot of stuff, which is a, which is a shame, but it is what it is, and, and I'll put in images and videos of what we've actually got while we're going through it. We also put a pair of Crank Motorsport um, ADR-approved bride seats. They are reps, but they are ADR. So it's so weird that even the, the actual genuine uh, bride seats aren't ADR, but these ones are, and they are um, on a Crank Motorsport rail as well. A couple of fitment issues there are in kind of like a prototype stage, but they do work and they do fit. We've got a few bits and pieces of trims that we needed, so we reworked all of the trims, so we pulled the clear coat off, the faded orange trims, tidied them up. We bought a brand new um, genuine manual shifter surround, which is probably the only carbon part you can still get new from Toyota. We got one of those, we got a genuine boot as well. Uh, reworked all the interior trim so it looks nice and tidy, cleaned it up as best as we could. And then there's, I guess, just small bits and bobs, like little trims that need to be glued back on and stuff like that that we'll do over the course of time. We got a genuine Apexi turbo gauge that was in the 99 car. So the 99 car, we're trying to revert back to standard. So we're taking off all the bits and pieces that aren't standard and, you know, putting it, putting it onto this car and, and vice versa. So that has a set of TN Super Street coilovers. So we'll be putting those in this. Outside of that, we got a G Red water temperature gauge um, hard to find the genuine stuff but we needed to slot it in on the gauge pillar where we put it on um, the gauge pillars look really cool and they are kind of period correct to that you know early 2000s uh, drift style chaser so that's kind of the build that we're going for we're going for kind of like a street driven like a street style some two style jz 100 so it'll be pretty cool we changed over those 19s onto the uh, one piece stern 18 inch wheels that we had on the 96 they're a really really cool looking wheel so we popped those over um, they had fresh sports max on them so we popped those onto the 90 well, onto the manual um, and so basically got it to a level so it's a bit of a frankenstein relative to the way that the car's been built uh, in japan it's also i guess a, um, a bit of a frankenstein in the way of bits and pieces that we're pulling off the other car again a little bit of a long-winded video i know but i wanted to give you guys a bit of an update as to what's going to be going on it's a big achievement to get simon out of full-time work and obviously in, as a tribute and celebration to it um, we're building a project car for the shop which is really cool he has handed in his notice so he's going to be there for a couple of weeks uh, at the time of this video being shot um, so he's going to be there for a little while which gives me the pleasure of being able to debug and find out if there's any other nooks and crannies and bits and bobs that need to be addressed um, and then basically when he finishes up and hangs up his boots it's just going to jump into a car that's already good to go and ready to go so lucky him good country again uh, you know this is like a like a pipe dream I wouldn't have ever thought that the situation would be the way that it is so we're super lucky we're very very grateful for people who've been supporting us following us and our customers that give us um, their unwavering faith in our ability uh, it's amazing that you guys are making all of this possible for us plans in the future for this you know we are going to paint it we're going to put the coilovers in it we're going to wire up that water to get those trims back together there's a couple of electrical niggles that are happening um, we've also got a beautiful genuine Nardi Torino wheel that's going in it with a quick release hub, a Workspell boss kit and an NRG quick release. We've also got a Sony uh, Apple CarPlay head unit that's going in it as well. In the near future there's a couple of things that are going on with it but um, you know as to what's been going on I guess we basically got it up to where it is now so we're, we're, we're really really happy with that. So yeah basically that's it I thought I'd do a bit of an update as to what's going on with the car. I'm glad you guys have been following it along. Uh, as things progress and as things, you know, eventuate to what our vision is, we'll be doing bits and pieces and updating you guys as we go. So now having more hands on deck gives us the ability to make more videos and make more stuff for you guys on YouTube so you guys can check it out. Um, thanks again for following. Thanks again for catching up with the video. Sorry again, having posting. We'll keep you updated. But thanks a million for following us, guys. If, you, if it's the first video you're seeing, consider liking and subscribing and doing all the other bits and pieces, comments and liking and all the rest of it. Uh, we appreciate you very, very much. Thank you very much for tuning into another video. You guys are the best. Thank you.